Anti-latency have sent me this box of very cool camera tracking equipment, which means I now have to turn this very tiny room into a virtual production studio. I want to at least be able to film a full body shot of a performer, which will require a much larger green screen and two square meters of floor space for the tracking equipment as well. Fingers crossed. The first step is taking down the pop-up screens and putting in place this Niwa green screen material. It's nine foot wide, and that means I can stretch it between these two stands to eliminate some creases. I got a little steam iron to help deal with those as well. So I've got some blackout material that I'm going to put on the windows and I've also got some blackout curtains that are going on some of the most offending white walls. Once those are up, the room will look like this. There it is. Still needs some work, but it's a start. You're probably thinking, why are you even bothering with real-time virtual production camera tracking in such a small space? It will mean not having to do it all in post. It will take a lot longer to do all the camera tracking for each shot in After Effects and Blender, but that's not even the most exciting reason. I really want to be able to see the talent and the virtual background happening at the same time and light them properly. That's what makes green screen suck. Bad lighting match. You really want to get that right on set. It's nearly the moment of truth for me to actually unbox the tracking equipment, so I started to clear some floor space. And I've done as good a job as I can possibly do. Essentially, I think I need about two meters squared. I really only just about have that space. Let me show you. The tape measure there, pretty much butting up against where the desk is. Two meters takes me all the way, let's see, to the edge of the green screen there. So I think the only thing left to do <laughs> is open that box. and it's unboxed. I'm so glad to see that everything is actually here. There's connective strips which have sensors on them. It turns out they need to be sort of arranged like a kind of circuit and then the foam pads go over the top of them like a jigsaw puzzle. Luckily, Anti-Latency have an app that you download and it helps you to generate a schematic for how everything gets laid out. Without that, I would have been very lost here, but also learned that I need 2.4 meters squared of floor space. It was tight before, and now it's even tighter. It fits. Awesome. And I'll show you this. Check it out. With this much space to spare at the edge of the room. My God. So with all the foam tiles down and in place, it's time to get it working. So I had the alt tracker from Anti-Latency that attaches to a tag that goes onto the camera that you're going to track. Those are picked up by the radio socket, another similar device that plugs directly into the computer. It's very similar to the dongle that Vive gives you. Only issue I ran into was trying to install the Anti-Latency plugin to Unreal Engine, but that was kind of my fault. I didn't have .NET installed on the computer and Unreal had a fit, <laughs> to put it in technical terms. Once I'd installed .NET, it was all very straightforward, and now I have tracking working in Unreal. It's kind of magical when the camera starts moving and you can just see the virtual environment move with your camera. For some reason, that just still blows my mind. Love that. So with tracking working, the next step was, of course, to get the footage piped from this camera directly into Unreal Engine so I could get my green screen footage and the virtual environment playing simultaneously. So that's what we want. But I ran into a green screen issue. I was using the newer green screen, which was just too reflective, and I've replaced it with a Westcott green screen instead. It's felt, and there are no hot spots on this thing. And you can see behind me now, it's lit very evenly with the Godox kit of TL120s. So these are tube lights, 1 meter 20 in length. So they're very large light sources, a nice soft light and very even distribution. It's been a day or so since we got tracking working with Anti-Latency. I have since been working to try and get footage from this camera piped into Unreal, and you need composure to do that. I'll throw my hands up in the air. I, first of all, don't know composure very well, and I kind of don't have much of a desire to know it that well, but sometimes needs must. And in this case, I've had to follow a few tutorials to get this running and I'm linking them below in the description because they are gold to getting this working. So here's a real quick tour of what's going on inside the reel at the moment. In Composure, I have a main comp that is made up of two elements. One of them is the green screen footage that will be piped live from this camera. That's the media plate. That's where the keying happens. Unreal's keying is not great, but that's not the point because I'm only using this as reference. It's basically so that we can get our lighting right on set. And finally, we have a CG element, which is essentially just the 3D background 
and that is placed underneath the green screen footage. Those things are linked to the virtual camera that's being tracked with the anti-latency dongle. So this will move around in real life. That will drive the virtual camera and it should all work. <laughs> that brings me to the next bit. Let's get it all working. Welcome to the smallest virtual production studio. Finally, I want to show you in action. But first, this is how the lighting is set up. And I've been going a bit mad with black wrap. So I've got a key light here, which is a little newer panel. Black wrap all around the uh, outside of it to stop spill onto the green screen. I'm going to turn a few lights on and off and show you exactly how it's all set up. So you can see with the green screen off, I'm not getting any spill from this light. I also have a uh, backlight here, right next to the green screen, which again has loads of black wrap on it. And that's again, stopping spill. So I just have a dark void behind me, which is exactly what I need. Here's the inverse and turn the backlight off and turn the key light off. In a room this size, that's crazy. So the reason I've got the lights set up the way I do with a key here and a backlight here is because that's exactly how I have it in the engine. I've set up two point lights in exactly those positions and that's why I think I'm getting a pretty good match because when I remove the green screen, behind me I've got a mesh from the Mission to Minerva pack uh, kit bash. You can see that's a pretty good match. So in post, what I would do is of course mat out each side and you wouldn't see the rest of the studio. And as far as the floor goes, I would put down another bit of green. And unfortunately, uh, I haven't got that far. But I am really pleased with being able to get a full body shot in this space. And I still have a little bit of room to move the camera back if I want to. So yes, okay, that's the green screen and lighting setup. Let's get the tracking on. And we're tracking. So first thing to note is of course this delay. The anti-latency tracking is very quick. In fact, probably instantaneous but the video feed has latency. So there's anti-latency and there's some latency. The video feed is late to catch up to the tracking, which is something that you would fix in your post-production software. So whether that's After Effects, Premiere or DaVinci, you would bring in your background plate and your foreground plate separately and then merge them and sync them. Having now gone through this, I truly believe that space does not limit your ability to do virtual production. <laughs> in fact, I'd go so far as to say that anyone with a real keen interest could get started with not too much difficulty. So in the spirit of having more people going out there and telling their stories, I've set up a Discord server. It's gonna be a community where people can get help, advice, maybe even inspiration. So there's a link in the description. If you head on over, it'd be great to see you there. And I'll see you on the next one.